Ayo. So this is one that I'm excited to do. And why am I excited to do it? I am hypercritical of things. And there isn't very much that I give praise to. And when I find something that's good, I do like to give praise to it. For a long time, it was the freaking whoop. And I pumped the whoop up. And recently, the whoop did me dirty. So I talked down upon the whoop. And right now, I'm loving on the Matt Frazier book, the Hard Work Pays Off book. I got the Audible version. So I'm going to be talking about... You can't see that. There you go. In terms of the audible version, I can look at the titles and I can give you my thoughts surrounding some of the chapters in the book. First thing that I do before I start reading a book is I read the description. Seemed pretty straightforward. It's going to be talking about his career and how he went through things. la di da duh. Uh, I like to look at the reviews, people who have already read it. It's going to give me some insight into what I can be expecting. I knew I was going to be reading it because I am the fitness guy. I love watching Matt Frazier's career. I had my own opinions of things that were going on, and I hope it would give me some more thought on all of that. So I was going to read it no matter what, but the reviews were negative from what I saw. I didn't expect it because everyone loves Matt Frazier, but the reviews were stuff along the lines of you could watch the YouTube channel. When you watch the YouTube channel, you'd pick up on more than you would if you read the book. And I was like, oh, crap, I'm just going to get this foo-foo, fluffy, oh, hard work pays off, oh, hard work pays off, oh, hard work pays off. And, you know, it, it is a saying, it's the name of his company, and I was hoping for more than that from the greatest CrossFitter of all time, except Frody. <laughs> uh, so, that being said, I already told you, I think it was great. I think the comments were far off, I think these people are out of their goddamn minds, and if they think they can get more out of the YouTube channel, what the hell are they talking about? Maybe they didn't hear the things that I heard, but I heard a lot of stuff that you wouldn't hear or see him talk about anywhere ever. And there's actually a section in here where he goes into the fact that he didn't want to be talking about that. It's in his section number five, talking about mentality. I won't post anything to the internet because I don't want to give my competitors an upper hand. So like, I don't know where these people think they heard these things in the past, but they're wrong, idiots. So, the coolest thing, he breaks it down into strength, endurance, speed, coordination, mentality, and recovery. And within that, he got editor's notes and side things. That's how he breaks it down in the audible version, at least. The strength part, and for a lot of what I do like about this, is what I preach to my people is what he talks about in the book. And there's no better way for me to get loving on something than aligning with my current thoughts. I believe so heavily in this stuff that it's what I do for a living. And when the greatest CrossFitter of all time has the same things to say, feels pretty good. Strength. He talks about his upbringing and how he worked with a coach who wouldn't let him put weight on a bar for a year. And at that year point, he had these wooden discs that look like these weights over here that were the same size so we could practice pulling it off the floor. But they weren't the 10-pound weights. They were just made of wood. They were light. It would allow him to get the feel, the sensation of pulling off the floor. And you'll hear about it if you do any research how the Chinese do this with the younger population. They want to make sure that the movement pattern is ingrained. Within the strength piece, he then ties it into his CrossFit career, how he goes years later at the 2019 Games, I can tie in the fact that I have this patterning of step up to the bar, step up to the bar, right hand, left hand, take a deep breath in, pump the hips, and then he just cleans it because it's second nature. He talks about how it's very important in the sport to make things very second nature. You want to do it without thinking much about it because when you think about it, it's room for error. You don't want to think, is this tight? Is that tight? How's all this going? You have to do that in practice. So it started when he was younger, learning how to do his Olympic weightlifting. Uh, he talks about going to the Olympic Training Center. He talks about some of the stuff that you have heard. So maybe this is where the critique was coming from when they're talking about, oh, he blew out his lumbar disc. And it's okay to repeat that story because maybe some people have never heard about Fraser. So I can't believe there's people who are giving him a hard time for that. The technique that he had learned through the Olympic weightlifting is something he bridged into his endurance section. So when he found out that he wasn't so good at the rower in the 2013 regionals doing Jackie, he said he bought a rower, he drove 5,000 meters a day. It's a story that you've probably heard in the past. Yeah, same thing. But what you didn't hear in the past is the fact that 
he applied his weightlifting principles to it. So he would do 5,000 meters a day, but he would do it where he'd break it down to pieces. He would just use his arms or he would just use his legs or he would do 10 by 500 meters and he would do 5,000 at a time or he maybe do two 5,000 meter intervals. You didn't hear how he did it. So in the book, it goes into how he started to apply his endurance uh, intervals. He then starts to talk about how he met Hinshaw. He would grab some workouts and he walked up to Hinshaw at a CrossFit endurance seminar and he's like, hey, I need some help. Of course, Hinshaw wants to work with a guy who's going to win the freaking CrossFit games. It's very apparent. So Hinshaw starts telling him about his intervals he needs to work in, something you've never heard of again. There's the three-hour interval, the two-hour interval, the one-hour interval, the 20-minute interval, the 10-minute interval, the five- to ten-minute interval, the four- to five-minute interval, the two- to three-minute interval, the one-minute interval, the 30-second interval, and the 10-second or under interval, all done on endurance equipment or with an endurance headset on it and how when you train these pieces you're setting yourself up for success in those time domains so when you do a workout and you go to the crossfit games and you can look at it and say okay that's 18 minutes we've done stuff like this we can do it with this that and around it's something you've never heard of before and it's cool to hear it come from matt frazier the best person in the world at this stuff from chris inshaw who's probably one of the best at teaching this stuff in the space so again cool to hear in terms of the book uh, he talks about within the same speed section that has to do with Hinshaw. He talks about, oh, sorry, endurance into speed. So that he kind of bridged Hinshaw into the next section where one of the cooler things is you'll watch Frazier do a workout and you'll see him doing the trail run. You go, wow, he's way ahead of everybody. I can't believe he's blowing Josh Bridges out of the water. Or if at one of the CrossFit Games 2019, which with the rope climbs and they had the whole world allowed to come because Greg Westman wanted to be inclusive and they kicked him out for not being inclusive, which is stupid, but not talking about that. Uh, Matt Frazier took a giant lead and then they'll talk about workouts like Murph and they'll take a giant lead over Josh Bridges. And like, how does this happen? Because he's not the endurance guy. Well, when he works with Hinshaw, he would talk about snapping the rubber band. And what he meant by that was you turn a corner, you disappear, and it freaks the guy out who's right next to you. So if you've got Matt Frazier and Justin Medeiros running down a hill, the whole field is back here, it's just these two, and you turn a corner, and Matt Frazier disappears, and Medeiros is here, and he's like, oh, God, I don't want to try and catch up to him. I'm just going to protect my second-place lead. And then they finish up in that order. Medeiros took his second-place lead, and meanwhile, Frazier's thinking, crap, that was really hard. Okay. I got to leave, and Medeiros is thinking, holy shit, that guy's so fast, I can't catch him. I don't want to try and keep up with that. I'm going to protect my second place lead. And Frazier just broke Medeiros' spirit the same way he broke Vellner on that rope climb workout, the same way he broke Bridges. Maybe it was Bridges on the trail run and not during Murph because Bridges won Murph. But on the trail run, he did the same thing to Bridges. Bridges was like, I'm just going to stay in second because I can't keep up with that freaking guy. Meanwhile, Frazier's dying. He tried really hard to get that lead, but he was hoping that it would break them, and it did. So it's cool. And it's another thing that you only pick up on when you read the freaking book or when you watch my freaking YouTube channel. So I hope I don't ruin the book for you, but it's cool to hear come from him, so it's still worth listening to or reading. I listen to it. Talks about coordination. Coordination is something that he had developed younger, which I don't like to hear I don't like to tell people, but I do kind of believe that a lot of what you did when you were younger allows you to do things when you're older. You see it with the gymnastics population. I tell everyone to get their kids into gymnastics if they have the ability to do so. Because when you're learning gymnastics, you're learning spatial awareness. Now, Frazier said he did skiing, and he could do double backflips when he was a kid off of ski slopes, and his parents get mad at him. And he would do them off of cliffs, and he had no fear, and it's stuff that he would do when he was younger. He talks about the scapular positioning that he would do for his weightlifting and his gymnastics movements. Another thing that I really like to talk about with my athletes, the importance of scapular health and knowing where things are in relation to other things and how that connects to almost every other thing you'll be doing anywhere in your body, the importance of it. Whew. So gymnastics positions are brought up within that chapter. Uh, weightlifting positions are brought up within that chapter. I'm looking at the chapters. Mentality. He talks about how he likes to train scared. He likes to get really out of shape so that when he tries to get back into shape, he's like, oh, God, I'm, I'm so far behind. He likes to have his back against the wall. 
also while trying to seem invincible. So he wants to set himself up and think of things and songs and positions that make him feel really good. Stuff you never hear, stuff he doesn't want to put out there while he's competing because he doesn't want to possibly give other people an upper hand. So again, talking about the reviews in the beginning, which were talking negatively, I can't believe it. This is this is great stuff. It's great to hear come from him. Uh, developing curiosity. Recovery. My biggest takeaway with him talking about recovery was, well, one cool thing was his wife, Sammy. And if there is a negative, which it's just a negative personally with me is when people pump up their other businesses or endorsements or whatever. But when it comes to this book and it comes to his wife and it comes to the amount of good information that's coming out of it, it's totally okay by me. If he talks about Sammy, his wife and the good that she did for him and the feeding the Frasers empire. So when he talks about how Sammy would shop twice a week and he didn't even know what he was eating, but he went, gluten-free but he didn't know he was just eating food that she was making but he was gluten intolerant and so it would give him a little bit of inflammation not a crazy amount but just enough and she'd take that out and that was her job in the Matt Frazier life which is pretty cool um with his recovery he talked about how he would overheat a lot so his main goal was to cool down as soon as he was done and you may have seen it arms in the thing we don't know why you don't know how important it was to him and his sleeping and how he needed to sleep cold and the chili pad and all that. Maybe you have heard bits and pieces, but not the why behind it. So I recommend if you are into CrossFit at all, competitive or not, or you've just admired Frazier, it gives you a little bit of insight. Um, it's better than the Froning book. I like Froning maybe less. Maybe, I mean, not less, but I've always, it's always been like Froning, Frazier, Froning, Froning, Froning. But now Frazier's like, Arr! because this book was just so freaking good uh just listening to what he had to say about a lot the straightforwardness i like the straightforwardness it's my big thing just people being transparent so the catcher in book i won't even pick the fucking thing up sorry she sucks Ah, i'm catching so frazier book is better than frony if you like frony definitely listen to frazier that's all i got i hope you Like the book as much as I do.